Is this thing on? Alright. Hey everybody. Uh, yeah, this is going to be, I guess, my last vlog for the shift. I won't be driving back and forth from work anymore for a few days. And then I'm on nights. So, yeah, that's cool. I, uh, don't know what I was going to talk about. I think, I was thinking about how, <laughs> again, I ended up talking politics with somebody. Like, it's almost like, hey, I think that everybody else is going to have the same politics as me, so I insist on saying how much I want Justin Trudeau out of office. Every single person that I meet or that I talk to throughout my day says that to me. Everybody. It's actually rather silly. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Justin Trudeau. I mean, I don't mind him. I like that he's socially progressive. I find many of the criticisms of him to be incredibly superficial and weak and very much like just talking points from conservatives. Even some leftists are like just repeating things that they've heard from conservatives. And it doesn't make any sense. Like everybody wants to, they're all worried. Like it's almost like Obama, except without the racism. He's the bad guy for absolutely everything. They blame him because there's no pipeline, even though he bought the fucking pipeline with our tax dollars. <laughs> fucking ridiculous. They're worried that he's going to take their guns. Everybody wanted pot legal right up until Justin Trudeau was the one who said he would do it, and then they all fucking quit and go... Ah, fuck, what a guy, He's, he fucked up the price of pot. Fuck me, it's just ridiculous. I don't know. I probably say that a lot, I don't know. I feel like it's something people should say more often. Well, where was I? Uh... Yeah, Justin Trudeau, I don't care for the guy, but when you compare him to the conservatives, he's a million times better. I had a conversation today online with a person that I actually quite like. She's quite nice and uh, she's thoughtful, but I disagree with her quite fundamentally on this one point, this idea of we need a pipeline to stabilize our economy or to to some yeah to stabilize it or make sure that our economy is strong and that's fucking nonsense like that's that's a straight out of a fucking right wing talk think tank propaganda bullshit we don't need a pipeline for a strong economy what we need is money in the hands of the working people and that pipeline is not going to do that. The pipeline is going to put more money in the hands of the company, the oil company. If we're lucky, if society is lucky, then some of that money will be put into the hands of workers through jobs temporarily. But it's not a fucking giant fix for economic problems. Capitalism has a built-in boom and bust problem. You can't regulate your way out of it. I know a lot of people think you can, but you can't. People have tried it for forever. As long as there's been capitalism, there's been boom and bust cycles. And there were rules in place to try and stop different things from doing that. But they get repealed every time a fucking conservative... Well, I mean, I'm thinking in the U.S. 
In Canada, I don't know. We still have a lot of the rules. That's why the 2008 housing crisis didn't hit us as hard. But we weren't immune. Anyway, I get, I, I could go on about that shit forever. The, uh, the pipeline makes me crazy. I know guys that work in the oil field. I work in the oil field. And everybody's hung up on this fucking pipeline. Like it's some savior that's going to keep all of us working. And it's just not so. Like it's just blind, blind commitment to this thing. Like, it's like they're worshipping this fucking pipeline, even though that's not going to fucking do anything. It's not going to solve our problems. You have to, and I mean, I'm not a fan of Justin Trudeau or the Liberal Party. They're centrists. They're neoliberals. They're capitalists. They're just not like let the fucking corporations do whatever they want type capitalists they still will take their money and they still let them get away with a lot of shit they get let them pressure them pressure them into policy changes that hurt the working class the liberals still legislate it, legislate people to back to work when they consider it an essential service Instead of fucking just paying them what they deserve. It's bullshit. And you know what? That's something that I can get on board with. If you're criticizing Trudeau, criticize him on his anti-union bullshit. Because that shit pisses me off. But that's not something that these guys will say because they're on board with that. They, they don't like unions. They think that unions breed entitlement and uh, laziness and workers who just choose not to do the work but that's not what you there are people in every situation in who take advantage of bargaining and of deals produced by unions because if they don't then they're well, frankly, you'd be stupid in, in a lot of ways not to, but but a lot of people just care about the work they're doing. And if they're getting paid a fair wage, then that's they're satisfied with that. But you don't get that anymore. And it's because of the anti-union stuff. It's because you can't bargain collectively. You have to bargain on your own. And on your own, you have no power. You're 100% replaceable. Without a union to back you, without all of your co-workers and unify, unified front against your company, you're fucked. You cannot bargain with them. They overrule you. They dictate to you what you get. And part of the reason that oil field workers think that unions are outdated is because industry standard is quite high compared to the rest of the population. And we don't have unions. But the fact is these companies don't have to pay you industry standard. They pay you that because they they are willing to They'll get some guy off the street who can work this job for $15 an hour or less if they can. And they will. <laughs> like, they absolutely can. There's no law saying they have to pay industry standard wages. It's just common practice. And when, as we see all the time these days, common practice is thrown out the window in the name of profit. I'm also thinking like, I don't know. It's just ridiculous to me that this all comes 
down to this pipeline idea that is somehow going to be the savior of Western Canada. It's always something that Ontario is doing to us is going to be the, the problem, right? Like, and Western Can Canadians or Albertans and Sask Sask Saskatchewanians, Saskatchewan, I can't even say it. People from fucking Saskatchewan can't even agree on what those things are, for starters. What they want, but they still always want, expect fucking Ontario and Quebec and BC to bow down to our fucking center Canada needs. You don't see the same shit out of Winnipeg or Manitoba, I mean, but whatever. Fucking pipelines. It's just a joke. Never mind that it's unceded territory. And there's plenty of dispute over whether or not they can even put that fucking pipeline there. It's just ridiculous to me to think that, like, people are pinning our country's hopes on this fucking pipeline. God, I just, I hope, I know, I know that it's the contrarian in me that does this, but I fucking hope Trudeau wins and fucking kiboshes the whole goddamn thing. And these people are going to have to see, hey, guess what? The pipeline wasn't necessary. You all fucking survived. You didn't lose your jobs. The oil industry didn't fucking collapse. Everything went by just the same as it ever fucking did before. Sorry. It's just frustrating. I was frustrated today too because there was an article uh, in the Leader Post on the Leader Post website. I can't remember where it came from originally, but it talks about how the uh, the leaders of the Conservative Party have to rein in the racism on their on the right. And because it's a real fucking issue. It's a really big issue. But I, you know, you make a comment on, on a news article and all the shit bags come out. Prove to me that fucking Shear's a racist. Okay, well, I mean, you can see who he aligns himself with. White supremacists and fucking... Former, K, former KKK people. Same with Scott fucking Moe. These guys aren't good guys. And maybe they're not overt racists, but this is the key. Like, this is something that if you studied, like, racism at all, you'd know more about. Like, you wouldn't have to... You'd, you don't have to be an overt racist to be racist. You can just say certain things. In the States, it's all about, uh, like, urban areas and, and high high crime rates and in urban areas. And I mean, the, the word Chicago gets thrown around a lot, and it's all, it's all coded language that means, is intended to vilify and keep black working class people under the thumb of whites, essentially. But people who vote for that kind of thing, and you see the exact same coded language with indigenous people in Saskatchewan and well, and all across Canada. First Nations people are vilified and unfairly treated in a, a many ways. And, I mean, there's plenty of debate to be had about whether or not Canada even really should exist. Because we just came in and decided that we own this. <laughs> like, it's just, it's, it's rather ridiculous. Some of it was... Uh, they're signed treaties and 
and whatnot, but not all of it. There's plenty of land that is unseated, that is like all of BC is unseated. Canadians just think they own it though. I think people need to fucking like hear some perspectives that other than what they learned in fucking elementary school. Read a book by an indigenous person. Like, I still haven't finished it, but I am reading uh, a book called Seeing Red uh, that is about how the media portrays indigenous people. And it's quite... It, it's quite the read. Like, I mean, and part of, uh, part of me knew this from social studies, even back when I was in grade 10. We talked about this stuff. Uh, maybe it wasn't quite grade 10, but like grade... 11 or something. It was in that high school range. Whatever. But people just don't understand racism. So they deny it. They deny it based on the fact that they have this idea of it in their head that misses the actual impact of race relations in North America. I wanted to mention too about this Gillette commercial. I know that there's going to be people already who say this, but Gillette, they may they may have taken a risk with this, but they saw profit, and that's why they made this uh, toxic masculinity commercial. That does not make it any less of a masterpiece, to be honest. Because I think it is. Like, it it made me tear up. Like, it, it really did. Like, you can see the way that society teaches men the wrong way to be men. And the, the ad really kind of lays it out there. And oh my God, I'll tell you, the, the centrists, the anti-feminists, the... IDW types, whatever you want to call them. They hate it. They hate it. The Sargonites, whatever you want to call these guys. <laughs> they cannot see the difference between toxic masculinity and being a man. Because the things they were taught about being a man are toxic. And they refuse to look at it. They cannot look inside and see how harmful it is to themselves and to others. I don't know. Whatever, I guess. It is what it is. People are going to be who they are. Until we educate younger people, I think that some of this was is pretty fucked. Things are pretty fucked. So, on that, I'm going to close this out. Uh, you know the things, whatever, like, uh, subscribe if you aren't already. Make sure to, uh, if you want, go support the, the Brainstorm Podcast on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash brainstorm podcast. And we're doing the live show this Friday um, with James Fell as our guest interview. And we also, like I said before, we're switching things up a little bit. So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to be talking about the yellow vests. I'm about halfway through my uh, my examination of the yellow vests across different countries. And I'm going to focus a lot on what's going on in Canada. I might... Yeah, mostly Canada. There's a little bit of stuff going on in the UK too. But 
my hometown just had a yellow vest protest the other day. Uh, and I mean, it's a fucking joke in Canada. The yellow vests are just anti Trudeau and anti immigrant. They want a pipeline, even though they don't realize that that's not going to help them. And it's just going to enrich oil companies. They want so many things that are just, or they don't even want so many things actually. Like the French yellow vests have like, I'm going to no stop Corey. I'm going to talk about this later. <laughs> I'll talk about this on Friday's show. I'll I'll have my shit typed out. Suffice it to say, I support the French yellow vests. I do not support the Canadian yellow vests. They've bastardized the message. But yeah, I just did, I just released an interview with Cass Midgley. Uh, the host of the Everyone's Agnostic podcast. He's a, a cool guy. He's a really nice and cool guy. I enjoyed talking to him. Um, so that's out on the Brainstorm podcast feed, which I guess you can you can find on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, wherever you find fucking podcasts. And I'm on... Uh, we're on Podchaser and Podknife and all these other sites now where you can go and rate us and review us. So, I mean, the more people that do that, the more exposure we get. It seems like we've hit a peak for downloads per episode. And we never go over it. But if you keep, if you share the show, if you give us ratings, reviews and stuff, maybe more people will see it. I like to think that we do a good show. And I love doing interviews. So. I guess that's where I I said I was going to close it out before. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, Don't worry about hitting that notification bell. I put out videos so rarely that uh, it might not be worth um, doing the whole notification thing. Unless you want it. That's cool too. It's totally your choice. Anyway, I hope everybody has a good one. And uh, talk to you later.